No, should we talk about 10.2? What's that? Hmm? <laughs> yes. Should we talk about 10.2? World point of sorry. what? Should we talk about 10.3? 10.3? Oh, this topic! 10.3? No, 10.3. Is there 10.3? No. Is there not? No, there's not. What makes you say that, Michael? Um... That there's just not going to be. Uh, <laughs> there you go. That Ten- is profound evidence. Well, here's, be, be, here's the actual evidence. Yes. Well, because um, as it's put here in our document, no cap real. Uh, that's clearly true. So right, uh, more evidence. Basically, there's uh, there's a few things. Uh, the old evidence is that Farak has an ahead of the curve mount. Uh, mm-hmm. Another part of the old evidence is the calendar, because yep. fitting at ten point three in with also having a season four great, you know, sort of greatest hit style thing would be quite challenging. It's interesting. It really is. They have, yeah, it's like, what do you have time for? You kind of have time for like, because like, you know, the seasonal gaps kind of like add up a little bit across the year. You sort of have time for like three and a half seasons uh, every two years, uh, six months a season. With uh, you know, with World of Warcraft, which kind of means two major content patches, sort of greatest hits and stuff, new expansion, um, sort of as their schedule. Yeah, it's kind of they want they clearly want the Destiny model, but it doesn't quite work with any of their scheduling so far, and it feels like they're in a world where they're trying to fight for complete rigidity and complete structure, so production can be super clean, but it also kind of. Uh, doesn't really pan out in reality. It's that whole plans don't survive contact with the enemy, and the enemy is time and having to make a video game consistently. I think that seems to do the way, especially now that this is their first time having, like, at least as far as we're aware, the first time having enough staff and enough resources to actually just go, we can do a load of parallelized work. Yeah. And it's like, well, what does parallelized work actually look like? What does doing two patches at the same time look like on how, like, what happens when you need to merge those two? What happens when you decide to move things back forward here like here and there all of this and it is very much uh well it's clearly not gone super plan but or maybe their plans maybe a bit maybe a bit shy to be honest who knows but yeah it's it's kind of hard to tell the idea that something could have been cut from dragonflight also doesn't seem turbo insane because like we've, we've heard of fast turnarounds and production still being kind of rocky like on the WoW team. Like I remember one or two people from the uh, 10.0.7 strike team. Maybe it was Covington and other people, but some people from that team just saying like, oh yeah, we got roped into this, you know, kind of late and we didn't have a lot of time and we came together really quick. Um, Which uh, which I suppose makes you wonder. Um, there's also strange things like Viranoth became our friend very quickly. That was that that was whiplash. Like suspicious. It was all the the way that they did it was as good as it seemed they could with what they had, and uh, you know the the actors all did good jobs in their scenes. You know all that stuff. That's all cool. But um, like she went from because like there's the the cinematic where she stops Frack from killing the dragon. Then we see her in game, and she immediately flips. Mm-hmm. It was so quick. So, like, that just makes me think cut content. Um, as well as just, like, a few other things being a bit odd in their rollout. It's like, to me, it almost feels like you, you could have timed the Bronze Dragon Mega Dungeon. Or, you know, you could have had that production for ages. But it's as if, like, the story around it maybe got cut down a bit or smooshed together. Yeah, because there was no introduction to the Infinites showing up and taking over the temple. There was none of that. And you go, interesting. And it feels like there's a lot of the, like... A lot of the small things have been kind of cut. A lot of the connective tissue seems to be largely mm. missing because it's we're that, getting big events. That's the stuff that kind of will go first. It's the stuff that makes sense to go because it's probably not, it's probably even the last stuff they do. Mm. A lot of the time there's a lot of what feels like the, um, what do you call it? The minor patches seem to be doing a lot of heavy lifting in terms of rapidly finishing storylines off. Like the stuff with the, um, like it wasn't bad in execution, but the stuff with Nosdormu and Eternus <laughs> was very much that felt like yeah. that felt like someone was given or a couple people were given. Here's the cliff notes for what we need you to do. We kind of need it a little bit earlier than you expected. Also, it's just you 
and maybe two other people to, to instead me, of a yeah. full team. You don't get to make a, like a load of cutscenes. We please, and you go okay. It, it almost feels like you know they're building a wall out of really big stones. And that's like the, you know, putting all the stones in a big pile is is the major content patch. And then the minor one is just getting a fire hose full of concrete and like, ah, shit, we got to fill in the gaps quickly. Uh, just because of, yeah, how um, how sort of bitty they are. You know, they're, they're small. They, no, no, I, I, see, I don't necessarily mean small. It's just they're a grab bag of stuff. Not always perfectly related. Because you look at patch 10.1.7, Fury Incarnate. And you're kind of left wondering, like, where is the Fury Incarnate? Is is that referring to, like, the 10 minutes of A-plot that I did? Is that referring to the What's bit where Farak went, I'm going to turn this guy evil? And then that was all we saw of him for yeah, a patch? Yeah, like, Fury Incarnate doesn't work for, was it, ta- no, Tarvard? And the, the Tears Guard people? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. That's not Fury Incarnate. No, it's clearly Farak. Yeah, Chromie, you know, Chromie and Eternus. That's not... Like, that's not Fury Incarnate. Where was the Fury Incarnate? Like, it, you know, it's a bit weird. It was 30 seconds of Farak we saw. Yeah. Doing nothing. That's an odd way to name a patch. It just makes you wonder kind of how it was put together. And um, though, to fill people in on the smoking gun is mm-hmm. the augment rune. Yes. So, permanent augment runes only come in, or at least thus far, have only came in as a feature at uh, the very final content patch of an expansion. So, there was one of these in Zareth Mortis, there was one of these in Nihilotha, there is now one of these in the Emerald uh, Dream. And I, So, it's it's 100k. Previously, ah yeah, we can see there, it costs 6,000 gold and 6.2, 47,500 for Legion, 50,000 for uh, BFA, um, oh, 50,000 for Shadowlands and 100k now. That's some uh, that kind of feels like what lunch costs, like to be honest. Well, it's really funny the wad to Legion difference because the Legion difference yeah. is clearly them thinking, ah, oh, shit, we let garrisons go on for how long? <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of that. Um, but yes, these have always been added in the final uh raid tier of the expansion, of course. Yeah. Season four of uh Shadowlands kind of doesn't count because it was the greatest hits, you know, it was the faded raids, which were just the, the previous three raids, but you know, with an affix and better gear. Uh, which, yeah, so this makes us think that uh, this is the end, and Indeed. but actually, it wouldn't be the end, uh, because uh, you, you know, you think about uh, 2.5, 2.7. Um, like, probably at BlizzCon, they will unveil the preliminary roadmap graphic for 2024. And in fairness to them, whenever they released the WoW 2023 roadmap, they fulfilled it. That they did. They did fulfill it. Now, they fulfilled it smartly in that, you know, it got more and more updated as time went on and they were able to know, like, this is what we could commit to doing. Uh, I think they did a fairly good job of not, like, misleading people um, with, uh, you know, with their roadmap. It it did feel like they're saying, this is what we're going to deliver. Uh, we're not going to overpromise. And, uh, you know, I, I at least feel they've, um, they've, they've executed on... Not necessarily all of the quality of content that I would want, but I think their content vision and cadence they've thoroughly executed on. That's true. I think there's some of the execution people are a little bit frustrated about at times, but on the like as we've been saying for this, this entire expansion, on the like the broad strokes, the execution's been like astounding compared to what we had before in so many ways. It's just we obviously were talking about the about, about the about the weird points, but the points don't make sense. And on 10.2 not being the end because 10.2.5 and 10.2.7 uh, are sure to exist. Uh, obviously they will, but does, is 10.2.5, is 10.2.7, are they things? Do people as a whole consider them bits of content? And that's where you get into a pretty, because obviously 10.2 being the end, you go, well, here's the last raid. Does the last raid not wrap up the story? Blizzard or yeah, they're gonna have that narrative problem again, where the the end raid cinematic isn't the equivalent of Sargaris appearing and stabbing the planet. They're probably. I hope they're aware of expectations there, because certainly, I mean, think about the death of Nazoth and the deaths of uh, you know of the Chuckler. Yeah, like how how do they expect to give us a full patch? story to end the expansion and then it not be over yet 
because I I gives you like basically two uh, two problems or two like uh, paths that ten to five and ten to or ten ten point two is the end that you go. That is the story concluded. I am satisfied and I can go away happy. That's one path, and then that leaves everyone going. Where is the rest of my game? Until eleven point zero comes out, and then there's a version which is ten two five and ten two seven. Continue the story. And then you get the, f- the full finale in a 10 to 7. And you go, okay, I understand everything. I can move on to this expansion now. And in the first version, you'd have 10 to 5 and 10 to 7 been like small lead-ins more than anything else. But then I think either way, there's going to be people going, what? Where's my game? And there's no way they're not going to feel that because a major patch is a major patch. And I don't think they've successfully sold things like Fractures in Time or Fury Incarnate as actual patches. To people. Like Fractures. Fractures no, of- Fractures did because it had... It had a yeah, it had a world content feature that felt like a feature, and not a like, you know, oh yeah, we coded up in twenty minutes something a bit different in the zone. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was it didn't come with a new elemental storm. It came with a new feature, right? Okay. This is me comparing Dream Surge to Time Rifts. Uh, it'll be interesting when we get to uh, people's opinions, because um, certainly there's a lot of a lot of sus. There's then Scribe, who. Uh, you know, has got the different take, and Jordan, who's got the definition of what a new norm is. Um, and, you know, screw it, we'll just do those now. I mean, T&E is certainly taking the last, uh, you know, rate of expansion boxes. Mr. GM, I don't want this to be the end. I like Dragonfly. I want to see it continue. Um, I tell you, I don't think point three was ever planned. The roadmap, uh, you know, this is the roadmap we should sort of expect. Raid, patch, patch, point one. Rep- yep. Uh, Liquid Max, it makes no sense in the expansion where we're getting patches faster than ever uh, before. Is randomly going to take one year for the third raid. Even with a fated season, this is honestly embarrassing and pud- puzzling if true. I mean, hey, if we could just have a brand new raid, um, Five months past pre-patch new expansion. That would be, that'd be pretty sick. That would certainly be good for Warcraft's growth and retention. I would say that's totally what I would. I mean, that's what yeah. you'd want, especially because you think about like Dragonfly. How are you going to wrap this shit up? Because the frack's going to go. I, I mean, there's you, you could even think like, didn't someone at Blizzard say, you know, oh, you'll know who the final boss is by the time you've done the first. Right? Ian said that in Dragonfly. Right, uh, Ian, so, pre Dragonfly. Right? Yeah, so Ian said that now. When you do that first raid, you know, I mean, you assume it's going to be their leader, a Riddicron. It's a Riddicron. Yeah, it's, by that metric, it's a Riddicron. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely not a Riddicron. Unless, I don't know, a Riddicron appears as um, as a trial. <laughs> and they just start pulling a Final Fantasy on us. Uh, or, you know, ah, Solo Duty, a Riddicron. Patch 10.2.7. That would be different. Um, so, yeah. I, it does make you wonder. Uh, Flex who obviously tweets um, extremely seriously all the time. It's actually over. Disappointing. The only way that tweet could have been better is if it had do dot better dot. Mm. That would have made it. I mean, (laughs) Flex is obviously a bit of a a shit poster, but this feels extremely, extremely real to me. Like, oh yeah, we paid more for roughly the same amount of content to spread out more and feel is most likely happening. Some people seem to like the point five, but major patches seemed empty, and it is a very weird like now that. I think there's stuff. There's something to say for that. Do you remember what it felt like about four or five hours in to patch ten point one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what it felt like was you type slash camp in, you log off, and you play a different game. Yep, and there's a healthy part of that, but yeah. not a couple hours into the patch launch. Yeah, because there's. There is that bit of you. It's like, where's the Obsidian Citadel? I'd be happy to just, I want to go. Mm. And yes, it did not give you that because it had the comedy mole people in the mole hole. So for some reason, I have to say comedy mole people in every stream. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, a bit of a deflection. It's like, it's multi, multi, most, mostly, sorry, the fact that there is that just that, hey, here's all our content. We're giving it to you split up more regularly in a field. And like, what, that's great, but what if we want? Why are our patches smaller now? Even if they aren't, they feel smaller in a bunch of ways mm. because you're just looking at it going. Where's all my content gone? 